Right now, we are being joined by Mr. Rajiv Menon, President, Asia Pacific Marriott International. Thanks a lot for talking to us, Mr. Menon. My first question to you is, is it safe to say that the lull caused by the pandemic is over for the hotel industry and especially for Marriott International? And how is Marriott International placed in terms of revenue in this uh, post-pandemic era? So, Santia, thank you for the opportunity, first and foremost. Um, Definitely coming out of the pandemic, one of the things I've been saying is that COVID has reaffirmed the power of travel. As many of us were locked up in our rooms, in our houses, um, it was very clear that most people decided that when they had the opportunity to finally get out, that they would spend time with family and friends traveling the world. And that's exactly what we've seen. Travel demand has really surged uh, coming out of the first quarter uh, for example, India was about 40% behind it versus 2019 in terms of rev par, which is what we call as revenue per available room. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at the fourth quarter, um, India actually closed almost 20% above 2019. Um, and for the full year, um, it actually recovered completely and more in comparison to 2019. That tells you that in terms of demand growth, we really made up um, pretty much for the whole year in about eight to nine months. And looking at the first quarter and beyond, um, our reservation activity, the pace that we're seeing remains very robust. So definitely India, Asia Pacific, globally, we're seeing exactly the same trends of very strong growth uh, in demand across all segments um, of the business. Talking about, you spoke about global trends as well. Now, the prospect of a global economic recession is looming. You know, I, I understand it's way too soon to ask this question. It may be uh, premature also, but God forbid, if something like that happens, according to you, what will be the impact of this factor uh, on the hotel industry? So, again, when you think about the global recession, you know, discussions going on, they're predominantly limited to the West. Um, India is still poised to grow at a fairly strong uh, GDP growth of around 6 to 7 percent. Um, so, and even in the West, as we look globally, um, our demand patterns and, and reservation activity is not showing any signs of slowdown. Um, we are seeing all segments, and there was, you know, this um, question, would corporate activity come back? While leisure has been very strong, um, group market was slow, uh, corporate activity was particularly slow early on in uh, coming out of the pandemic, but we've seen all of these segments pick up very, very strongly. In fact, Asia Pacific, corporate activity is back to pre-pandemic uh, pre levels, and group activity remains really strong. India particularly, I continue to say that you know, light is shining on India because of G20 presidency. Right. So you will see lots of great meetings coming across to this country. We've already hosted some high profile meetings in our hotels right. and will continue to do so for the rest of the year. Actually, I was about to come to the booking trends uh, as far as Asia Pacific region is concerned, specifically India. Do you see any change, any significant change in the booking trends? You did speak about how the corporate booking is, you know, it's getting back on track. Uh, can we see that international travel is back to what it was? Uh, also, you know, last time when you spoke to us, a staycation and a short weekend travel was, you know, the flavor of the travel. Is the situation same? Any other new trend? Yes, yeah, so we've been calling this be leisure, which is business and leisure blended together. Okay. Um, and we are seeing this trend continuing all the way through. Uh, short breaks still remains pretty strong. Um, you know, and as more and more infrastructure improvements happen, great roads, airports, we see Indians taking more and more of these short breaks, getting out for three or four days and doing so. So when you think about the reservation activity, I talked about G20 as an example. So group business has come back very strongly. Um, today, socials remain very strong. Corporate activity is bouncing back and the leisure demand still remains pretty robust. So from that perspective, when you look at, you know, across segments, uh, there is real strong surge in demand. That's really good to know. Uh, last year, Merit International announced that you're going to add six to seven more hotels, uh, especially in cities like Bengaluru, Kochi, Vizak, 
and uh, Vijag and Shillong. What's the state of those hotels and uh, when will the hotels start operating? So we opened 11 hotels last year. This year, across South Asia, we're going to open 13 more hotels. Two have already opened. We're adding another 1,500 rooms. So today, across India, we operate over uh, 27,000 rooms in terms of around 137 hotels. Um, and this year, we are poised to add another uh, 12 to 13 across the country. So we are opening one hotel a month. Also, apart from you know uh, opening this, these new properties, are you also looking at some uh, acquisition or you know uh, uh, taking over already existing properties and you know rebranding them? So conversions, which is um, you know uh, basically owner partners coming to us and saying they have a standalone hotel or they have a hotel with another brand and they want to convert that to a married branded hotel remains pretty strong in India. Uh, last year, 20% of our signings were conversions. In Asia Pacific, in fact, over 30% of our signings were conversions. Uh, case in point here, our beautiful St. Regis Goa, uh, which is an incredible luxury hotel, was a conversion. Um, and similarly, we have a number of others that, that were converted. Uh, in some cases, they were brownfield projects that hadn't opened yet. Others, the operating hotels where the contracts are coming up, and the you know the owners, our partners prefer to work with us.